Four words. That's all you need to break the ice. In this video, I'm going to share what those four words are and my 10 favorite four word icebreaker questions that have never failed me. And best of all, these four words are going to make you smile. You can't see me right now, but in a moment, I will appear and I expect something will happen to you. Did you win? <laughs> How cool is this? So I'm like death scrolling through LinkedIn on my social media feed uh, on one particular day and I got stopped by seeing this group of very beautiful looking people wearing a t-shirt just like this, various colors. But it wasn't the fact that they were beautiful and they're wearing you know, really interesting colored t-shirts. It was the fact that there was just four words on here that caused me to stop. Who smiles first wins. And I'm wondering that when you saw it, what was your reaction? Because I know when I saw it, just in a picture, not even real life, and I know this is you're watching it as a video, it caused me to not only smile, but also think about the impact of what we can do to make it as low risk forms of interaction when we're inviting people to break the ice, to invite them to get to know one another. And I think there's some real magic embedded into these four words. So in this video, I want to share with you a list of 10 fantastic questions that come with no more than four words that will help a group break the ice. But importantly, I want to share with you what makes an icebreaker an icebreaker. Just imagine for a moment if you're at a gathering and everyone had a t-shirt like this. What would be possible? But imagine again if maybe no one was wearing a t-shirt, they're just regular clothing. What would you do that could invite levels of low risk interaction to help them get to know each other that would, without even having to say anything, just broadening a smile would be enough to create a connection with someone you don't know at all. This is what I've got in store for you. But first, a warning. What I'm about to share with you is not the truth. I made it up. Now, I happen to have applied these technologies liberally over many hundreds of thousands of people all over the world for the past 35 years and found them to work. But please know that I made this up because this is what I've learned is that as human beings, we're comfort seeking machines. And even though it's baked into our DNA that we want to be able to connect socially with other people, the reason we pull back from doing that is because we're concerned that we're going to be threatened or embarrassed or made to look like a fool. And so we pull back. And that is exactly why whenever you utter the words icebreaker or team building, that people's eye rolls or they groan. And it's, it, this is my experience. They've never ever done that because of what you're going to do perhaps, but it's because of their past experiences. They think about how they were feeling during those experiences that were not led very, very well. So this has led me to understand that when I looked over all of my work, what experiences and in particular, what characteristics of the experiences that I'm sharing with this group are actually helping to break the ice? Because if you think, when you look at your agenda, oh, yo, 9.05, we should do some icebreakers and then we do this. Th there's a big difference between what you might know as an icebreaker and an experience that breaks the ice. And in my experience, there are five key principles or key ingredients that makes an icebreaker an icebreaker. The first one is it has to be fun. If it ain't fun, it ain't worth doing in my mind, but I'm going beyond it just triggering laughter. It should be a nourishment of soul, not at anyone's expense. It's just simply a nourishment of someone's being. That's the first principle. If it's not fun, it ain't worth doing. Two, for in order to break the ice, it must be highly interactive, providing opportunities for sharing. And a lot of, a lot of icebreakers that I know typically aren't very interactive. It's often just listening to one other person. So it's got to be interactive, providing opportunities for sharing. Non-threatening. That's principle number three. You know, in my experience, again, when I've been a participant, many of the icebreakers that have been played have really threatened me. Like this is literally an experience I had where 
um, as there was some sort of kerfuffle going on with t technology, the MC just turned to the mic and said, okay, while we're filling in time, just turn to the person next to you, the beginning of the conference, and share one of your most ex embarrassing experiences. What? Like, that's not an icebreaker. Yet, I, I bet you, if we were to ask that person, that's probably what they would have said it was. So, non-threatening. Remember, we're comfort-seeking machines. Anything you do, a question you ask, an experience you invite, needs to keep people within their comfort zone. That is, they can find success within that experience. Number four, it's got to be simple. If it ain't simple, you're going to really disengage people pretty quickly. If it takes you longer than 30 seconds to describe what needs to happen, you're going to lose people, especially young people. So keep it simple. And finally, make it success oriented. All of these elements are imbued in these four words of the icebreaker question. It's low risk, non-threatening, simple, highly interactive, but success oriented because success is found in a smile. And it only has to be one person. And if it's not anybody, then you might find it with somebody else. So success oriented doesn't mean win or lose. It's about have you generated energy? Have you provided an opportunity to interact and share? Have you had fun? Okay, let's go have a look at these four worded icebreaker questions. So <laughs> they're really economical and you don't need to say or even remember much about them, but they're packed with power. Now, this may not be a question you want to ask. It's great on, it's on a t-shirt because everything you need it to do is there ready to go when you interact with someone perhaps that you don't know. But these next questions, based on the premise of a group of people, maybe they don't know much about each other, but got the opportunity to talk, to share with one another, either as a partner, a small group, maybe even a large group. I'm going to go through these questions fairly quickly, maybe just a little bit of commentary as we go through. Here comes number one. What brings you joy? <laughs> It's such a great question. What brings you joy? Look, I hope every person you ever ask that question for have multiple answers to that question. But it might be what brings you joy or what brings you happiness. Again, choose the word that suits your particular group or your vernacular, but a wonderful way to start. And it's starting from a positive perspective as a way to break the ice. Number two, this is actually Three words. <laughs> to be fair, it's not even four, but what amazes you? What amazes you? Goodness, that could be anything from technology to the way that people interact to something that happened to you this morning or why something actually happened this morning. All of those are options. And again, if you have crafted these carefully and you've had a sequence of activities that are non-threatening, people will respond with something they're willing to share. They are never going to share something that that is going to threaten them in any particular way. So maybe they are amazed at something that happened in the news this morning, but they might feel that's a bit edgy. So they look for something else to share that actually answers the question. Okay, the last question had three words. This one has five. So on average, they've all got about four words. But what are you grateful for? Oh, what are you grateful for? That was something that's just worth pausing and thinking about. And, and it's a great place to start many meetings. I know I start with my family, our evening meal, holding hands and thinking, what are we grateful for today? And it's not just about the sunny weather, but it might be that I have a car that allows me to get from A to B without failure. You know, the, they can be found in the little things, but also the big things as well. Question number four, what makes you smile? It's a little bit related to the earlier questions, but a bit different. Maybe this is something that made you smile. Maybe it's a question. Maybe it's the fact that you found this t-shirt. But this is something that's really worth considering. When did you last smile? Now, that may be putting a little bit of pressure on, well, when was the last time? So that's why it's like, what makes you smile can be a really more powerful question for you. Next question, name a favorite place. Name a favorite place. It could be within your home, it could be in your suburb, your country, in part of the world. Maybe it's inside your head. Maybe there's a particular place that you bring yourself to, your being to, and it doesn't matter where physically you are situated. Lots of ways of answering that question. Okay, what excites you? Another three-worded question. What excites you? What are you getting excited about? Maybe it's a, an anniversary coming up or there's a football game or you've got a particular challenge or an exam or 
who knows, a birthday or that you're going to meet somebody. I know that's a really powerful tool when people are stuck or homesick or wonder what they're going to be doing or if they're feeling um, unsure of themselves is give them something to look forward to. So a question like what excites you might start to think about the next time they could actually you know, meet that level of feeling, that level of excitement. This one brings us straight into the 21st century. What is your favorite app? Name your favorite app. There's four words. Okay, and that can be really enlightening. My guess is a lot of people have a lot of apps and so they're going to choose the one that perhaps reveals only that little bit of themselves that they're willing to share. You know, maybe that app that they really do use a lot but they don't want to share it because it may look a bit weird. That's probably not the one they're going to talk about. So name a favorite app. Doesn't say it has to be their most favorite or their most used. So notice the way in which I've used the words here. Question number eight, what is your greatest motivation? What's, what motivates you? What is your greatest motivation? Maybe it's you, maybe it's built in, maybe it's your drive, your fuel, maybe it's a goal, maybe it's your family, maybe it's something else, some level of competition. What motivates you is a great question to ask. Okay, we're down to our last two now. Describe a favorite memory. Pull out your phone. That might actually trigger some of those memories, but just simply sitting there and thinking, Okay, what would be a favorite memory? Now, most people are going to have lots and lots and lots of memories. Again, from an ice breaking perspective, encourage people to find something that they're willing to share. They're only going to want to do that anyway. But when you gain, you don't say, what is your favorite memory? Just you talk about a favorite movie, um, a favorite movie, a favorite memory. Maybe movie is your favorite memory, but favorite memory means you've got lots and lots of choices to choose from. All right, let's wrap it up now. Here's question number 10. Describe a recent adventure. Describe a recent adventure. Now, adventure in its purest form, and I would often say this when I've asked this question to actually give the definition of adventure because for many people they think of jumping out of planes or rock climbing or whitewater rafting. They're all great adventures and examples thereof, but adventure in its purest form is unanticipated outcome. An unanticipated outcome. So when you think about something you weren't too sure what was about to happen, that's an adventure. You know, maybe you started a course of study or you met someone for the very first time or you started a new job or you went out on a date or you just got married. They're all examples of adventure. So describe a recent adventure or a favorite adventure. You could even give it some further frameworks if you want. Now you remember earlier I talked about how I saw these t-shirts being worn in a post in LinkedIn on one of my social feeds and it actually belonged to Carl and Shaw. Now she is completely unaware that I'm actually even recording this video and yes I love the t-shirt but it was more about the fact that it generated in me, it triggered in me that concept of what could I find that is low risk but high degree of reward in terms of inviting people to interact. But if you'd like to know more about the t-shirt, go to um, smilesfirstwins.com or strangers2friends.com. Carlin Shaw is the woman behind it and I'm sure she would love to hear from you and just let her know where you learned about this t-shirt. But uh, the part that I want you to hang on to is what was embedded? What's the magic embedded in a four worded icebreaker question? And so now over to you. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What resonated for you in this episode? What really struck out? What was something that you learned or discovered in what I've just shared that you'd like to take away? Maybe it was one of those four worded questions. Maybe it was something about what I show, shared about um, icebreakers and what helps them do effectively break the ice. Let me know. It's part of the price of admission to let me know and comment about whether this was actually even useful for you. And if it was, let me know and add to the collective wisdom of our whole community. And finally, if you saw anything in here that you would like to know more about, we have dozens more videos within our channel that you can check out. You'll see those in the end screen towards the, the, the back end of our video. But you can also go to playmeo.com, which is a massive collection of icebreakers, energizers, team building activities, trust building, and so on. Over 530 activities there right now 
that you can get free access to. All the step-by-step -step instructions are there ready for you to play with right now. And if you like what you see, start a seven day free trial. It completely cost free. You will need to put in your credit card, but it won't charge it until seven days later, at which point you might decide this is not for me, you cancel, won't cost you a cent. But if you love it, then it's a really inexpensive way to become a member of our community and have an ongoing access to hundreds and hundreds of icebreakers and energizers and so on um, for the next 12 months. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. I look forward to responding to your comments below uh, in the comments and uh, I wish you all the fun out there. Yeah.